Yakuza, members of Japanese organized crime syndicates, effectively gangsters. One thing they are extremely well known for are their strict codes of conduct. For instance, should a low-ranking member of the Yakuza make a mistake, he is expected to ritualistically cut off portions of his own fingers and present them to his boss as penance. As of 2015, there are an estimated 100,000 Yakuza members, and with such a strong presence in Japan, there are inevitably going to be many true, horrific experiences to share. Here are but a handful of stories from people who encountered Yakuza members, or have been involved in the Japanese crime underworld themselves. Some listeners may find one or two of these stories shocking or upsetting. Viewer discretion is advised. Number 1 During high school, I used to be a part of a group of thugs. We didn't do anything too severe. We'd just work together and shoplift every now and again, and vandalize shops and buildings with graffiti. Honestly, looking back, I was an asshole. I regret those days. One of the members of our group was called Kenji, and he used to be a Yakuza. But he wasn't particularly scary or anything. In fact, he was always kind to us. He'd tell us stories about the world of the Yakuza. The story I'm about to tell you now is one of the stories he told to me. When he had just joined the Yakuza and was still a newbie, his work just involved helping out his Yakuza colleagues. He was made to buy drinks and cigarettes. Basically, he was just an errand boy. Kenji hadn't wanted to join the Yakuza in the first place. He was made to join half forcefully, and was thinking about quitting if he wasn't able to do anything interesting. But one day, one of the Yakuza came up to Kenji. Hey, Kenji, could you help me out? It was probably just some boring job again. But as usual, Kenji didn't have the option to say no. So, without asking about what the job was, he just nodded his head and accepted the job. Okay, here you go. And the Yakuza member passed Kenji the key to a car. What the fuck is this? Kenji asked. The Yakuza guy just sniggered. It's your first job. Kenji was then given a map, and was told to drive the car down to a scrapyard located 20 kilometers out of town. According to him, all Kenji had to do was give his name, and the car would be disposed of by the people working there. Without fully understanding why, Kenji drove the car to the scrapyard, as he was told. When he finally got there, he found a few men were lying in wait for him. One of them came up to him. Is this Akio's car? The guy asked. Kenji confirmed that it was, and as soon as he did, the guy said, Okay, get out and give me the key. Kenji didn't really understand what was happening, so he just listened to the men and obediently did what they said. According to Kenji, in the Yakuza world, it's best just to do what you're told and ask questions later. The man got into the car and drove the car into a space between two massive iron plates. As he got out of the car, he called, Okay, do it, to another man, who'd moved to a control room without Kenji noticing. The two iron plates began to suddenly move, and slowly crush the car into a flat plate of metal. When Kenji was telling me this story, this is where he paused to light a cigarette. It sounds like you were just made to help in disposing of an old car, I said. Kenji then said to me, I wasn't finished. You see, when the two iron plates started to crush the car, I heard a scream from the inside. And when the two iron plates were really close to each other, there was a definite splattering sound. That wasn't the sound of metal being crushed. In the end, I didn't ask the guys there about it, and I didn't confront the Yakuza who'd given the errand to me. But you know, I did have a hunch. That's why I didn't check the trunk of the car. Kenji started to nervously laugh. I felt really sick. Number 2 
Number two. This is a story I heard from a Yakuza member who I was friendly with back in the day. Apparently, he used to hang around with another young Japanese Yakuza member. Basically, they spent their time going around town, finding women to hit on and take them back home. The only problem was they were very forceful, and used hard drugs and aphrodisiacs to make the woman more obedient. So, one day, as usual, the two of them planned to go on an expedition, let's say. But due to sickness, my old friend decided to stay behind, and the young Yakuza went on without him. Apparently, he was successful in catching quite the looker. Once he managed to persuade her to go back to the hotel with him, he pinned the poor woman down and injected her with drugs. Only problem was, the woman died as a result of the drugs. There's no particular clear reason why she died. Maybe she died from an overdose. Maybe she just had a bad reaction with one of the chemicals. It didn't matter. Terrified of a police investigation, the young Yakuza went crying to his boss and asked him what to do. This wasn't a common occurrence, but not an unusual event in the Yakuza world. So the boss told him if he brought the body over to the office, he'd take care of it from there. Relieved, the young Yakuza explained the situation and forced my ill friend over. They both somehow dragged the body out of the room without being seen, threw it into the car, and drove down to the Yakuza office building at full speed. But this is when the trouble started. When they showed the body to the Yakuza boss, his face froze over. There was no way for them to know, but the woman in the bag was actually a relative of a general in another Yakuza group. If this body was found, the residual of drugs left inside would lead straight back to their Yakuza group. There could even be an outright gang war. So, although it was roughly two o'clock in the morning at this point, the Yakuza boss called a few other Yakuza members. Along with him and his friend, they drove deep into the mountains to dispose of the body. What proceeded was hours and hours of digging. They had to make sure that the hole was so deep that there was no way the body could ever be found. Once they'd finished digging, it was around five o'clock in the morning, and the sun was starting to rise. Exhausted, his friend dumped the body into the hole and was just about to start covering it up, when suddenly... The other Yakuza members surrounded him and tied his legs and arms up with duct tape so he couldn't move. Being tired from all of the digging and completely outnumbered, he wasn't able to fight back at all. My friend knew this was going to happen. He'd been tipped off by the boss and was expected to help. You see, they drove down to the mountains for two reasons. One was to dispose of the body, and the other was to get rid of the culprit of the murder. His friend hopelessly thrashed around to no avail. The Yakuza members picked him up and dropped him into the hole next to the body. They proceeded to fill up the hole and buried his friend alive. Number three. I was a university student when this took place. Me and my friend from university were drinking at the counter seat of an izakaya bar. On the far side of the counter, there was a beautiful woman. I mean, she was gorgeous. I think she must have been in her early thirties, and she was drinking by herself. The atmosphere of the izakaya didn't suit her. In her elegant black dress and high heels, she was the kind of woman you'd expect to see in a hotel lounge bar, with a rich businessman or something. Although we wanted to talk to her or buy her a drink, we were just sitting and talking to ourselves, too nervous to actually approach her. A while later, a man entered the izakaya. He looked to be around 40 years old, and was incredibly muscular. He was dressed in a black suit, 
and appeared to be a businessman of some kind. Without a word, he silently approached the woman who was sitting by herself. Thank God I didn't try and hit on her, I thought to myself. She must have been waiting for him. I leaned over to my friend to whisper the same thing, when suddenly, smack, the guy punched the woman in the face. It wasn't a slap around the face or anything, it was a full-blown punch. Without even having time to scream, the woman fell to the floor. The guy then jumped on top of her and proceeded to pummel her from all angles. The whole izakaya froze over. Everybody, including us two, just stood there, dumbfounded. It happened so suddenly, nobody could do anything just from the sheer surprise and fear. The izakaya was completely still, and all you could hear was the thud, 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 as the man delivered blow after blow. The woman seemed to be half unconscious, and all she did was moan every now and again. I wasn't sure how long it lasted, but when the guy finally stopped, the floor and his shirt were covered in blood. The woman's face was no longer even in the shape it was before. I remember thinking, if you hit her that much, she's actually going to die. But I couldn't do anything. I would have helped if I could, but I just couldn't move. I was frozen in fear, since I knew this guy was likely a Yakuza. And you seriously do not want to mess with those guys. Then something happened that confirmed my suspicion. The guy kneeled down and picked up the woman by the scruff of her neck. As he did, something fell to the floor with a thump. It was a revolver. He picked it up and dragged the woman out of the izakaya without saying a word. I have no idea what she did to deserve that. Being a Yakuza, he was potentially her pimp, or perhaps she had turned him down or embarrassed him. Either way, I have no idea what happened to that woman after that. Number 4 I'm a salesman, working in the south of Japan. I'd prefer not to reveal any private information. This is something that happened when I was 16 years old. Like so many other youths in my position, rather than finding a proper full-time job, I spent time fucking around, drinking, going on nights out and hitting on girls. Eventually, I ended up hanging around a lot with a guy I knew who had graduated from the same high school as me three years earlier. Let's call him Hitchy. It seems weird me saying this when I hanged around with this guy for so long, but Itchy wasn't a nice guy. He was pretty short, maybe 150 centimeters tall, had a punch perm hairstyle, a popular hairstyle for thugs and Japanese Yakuza, and spent most of his time getting fucked up on solvents and getting blind drunk. Using Itchy's contacts, we managed to get a part-time job working for a small group of Yakuza in the city. The job mostly involved boring shit like cleaning and washing, but the pay was pretty good. The Yakuza probably have a hard time finding cleaners willing to work for them. The gangsters were really nice to me, probably because I was still just a kid. But Itchy wasn't so lucky. Basically, the guy was incredibly stupid. He kept on spouting obvious lies about how tough he was, and wasn't a particularly hard worker either. He was constantly being shouted at by the Yakuza members. One day, Itchy, high on drugs, tried to rape a prostitute working at the local soapland. This wouldn't have been a problem from the Yakuza's point of view, but the girl happened to be the squeeze of one of the gang members. Let's call him X. After hearing about the incident from the girl, X called Itchy to the office of the gang. At the time, it just so happened to be my shift, and I saw the whole thing. Itchy started to babble excuses like a broken record, but X was not listening. Without warning, X picked up a golf club 
and proceeded to bash Itchy around the face. I was scared shitless. I thought I was going to piss myself right then and there. He continued to beat Itchy to the ground, and an onslaught of violence continued for what seemed like hours. At the end, Itchy's face was completely fucked up, and his legs were obviously broken. He seemed to be on the verge of death. X eventually stopped, and he called me and one other Yakuza member over. We helped him pick up Itchy, and we dragged him to a van. Although I protested, I was then forced to drive the van to a warehouse located deep in the mountain range. Once we arrived, X dragged Itchy out of the van and into the warehouse. Me and the other Yakuza member followed him in. I was terrified. I didn't care much about Itchy. I just wanted to leave as soon as possible. But as soon as I was there, X handed me a rope with a noose attached. He looked me in the eyes and said, scarily calmly, You're going to kill him. Thinking back now, I understand why. It was my bad luck to be there in the first place. If I was the one to kill Itchy, there would be no way I would talk to the police about the incident. I cried and pleaded with him. I'd always thought of myself as a tough guy. I'd also thought about becoming a Yakuza in the future. But I realized at that moment that I was not cut out to do this. I couldn't kill this guy. My desperate attempts to avoid the gruesome task seemed to annoy X. He grabbed me by my hair and started to repeatedly slap me in the face over and over again. Slaps turned to punches. I'm not sure how long the beating went on for. All I know is that by the end of it, I didn't feel any pain anymore. I just felt a dull ache. Then, suddenly, the punching stopped, and I fell to the floor. Itchy, who had been knocked out, had slowly turned his head and was looking at us. X let go of me, and he picked up a baseball bat he had brought with him. He then proceeded to smash Itchy around the face. The other Yakuza who was with us also picked up a bat and went to work on Itchy. They continued to bash him from all angles, and for better or worse, Itchy seemed to cling to life like a newborn clings to its mother. The next thing I remember is the other Yakuza member picking me up and taking me back to the van. It's all a little blurry after that. The next morning, I woke up in the office. A few days after all of this, Itchy's face was on the front page of a local newspaper. The headline read, Youngster, high on drugs, falls off bridge. I don't know why I'm telling this story now. I don't feel guilty about Itchy's death. After all, it wasn't my fault. I guess I just wanted someone to listen to me for once. Hi guys, Lazy here, and thank you very much for listening. I just want to say a massive thank you to Phantasmal Wretched for translating these stories for me from uh, Japanese into English. Make sure to check out his channel for more Yakuza themed experiences if you enjoyed this video. And uh, also don't forget to subscribe for more true horror from me. I have a few other fun video ideas planned as well, so you'll hear from me again very, very soon. Stay spooky. And remember, the best things happen in the dark.